You know, there's nothing more dangerous than a snake pit. Unless, of course, you've been to a University of Missouri faculty meeting. <laughs> At one such meeting, I insulted the president, President Laws, to his face. He called me out of order, and I demanded a vote of my fellow faculty members to be heard. And I knew they'd back me up. And the vote was unanimous. Unfortunately, it was against me. <laughs> You see, by the time uh, my motion came around, even I knew that my temper had once again got the best of me. And so even I voted against my own motion. <laughs> <laughs> but President Laws had had enough. He said one of us had, had to go, either him or me. And I guess you know how that turned out. <laughs> but I wouldn't leave. I was terminated, but I said as long as my position remained, I would remain in it. A month later, the Board of Curators terminated my position and declared it vacant. <laughs> it must be my Yankee stubbornness. You see, I'm from Maine, although... <laughs> that's, that's just great. Uh, you see, I'm from Maine, and uh, although living here caused me to somehow develop a heavy Missouri accent, I was born in 1817 to a poor blacksmith and farmer. My dad wasn't able to send me to college, but I made my way. I taught school at the age of 16 and studied geology, chemistry, and mineralogy at Bowden College, which I think I mispronounced. Um, Bowden, and somebody else told me that. By the way, I was going to mention that if these people out here all wore this type of outfit, I can understand why most of them's dead. <laughs> uh, I married my dear Martha in 1844, and uh, when she was just 15, which nowadays would land you in the penitentiary, but then it was okay. Uh, we had two children, Anna Parker, who lived a full and robust life, and little George Clinton Jr., who, to my ultimate heartbreak, drew his first breath and said hello to the world, and five minutes later drew his last and said goodbye to him. In 1851, I was named to be chair of the geology and chemistry departments here at the University of Missouri, and I made the journey across the country. My first tenure at the university didn't last very long because I was named by then-Governor Sterling Price to be the first state geologist of Missouri. Uh, I was paid the king's ransom of $3,000 a year. Back then, that was a lot of money. Then I started my second tenure at the university in 1857, and believe it or not, I soon became dissatisfied with the administration. I threw my head in the ring to be the university's president. Incredulously, I lost. But I got together a group of like-minded professors and faculty, and we petitioned the Missouri legislature to completely eliminate the position of president and have the faculty report directly to the Board of Curators. Well, once again, my superiors did not see eye to eye with me, and the legislature, in its clouded wisdom, ended up voting in a whole new Board of Curators, adding some faculty, all to help keep me in line. In 1929, this boulder behind me was moved here by my former students uh, after they had tried to erect a burial monument taller than any other president of the university's monument. Well, when they realized the powers that be weren't going to let them do that, they rolled this boulder here, made of granite, to get the last laugh. You know, uh, they, the students, although I had a little bit of a problem with the administration, the students loved me. They nicknamed me Daddy and called me the most beloved instructor at the University of Missouri. But in 1930, see, I died in 1899, okay? In 1930, Swallow Hall over here was dedicated to me by the same university that fired me. <laughs> okay? That still chaps my ass. <laughs>
and stood up and fought for what I thought was right. And I would urge all you sons of Missouri to do the same. You'll never regret it. Thank you and good day. I'd rather be a brave man's widow than a coward's wife. These are the words I said upon hearing of the death of my husband, Colonel Richard Gentry, on Christmas Day of 37 in Florida, fighting the Seminoles under future president Zachary Taylor. My name is Ann Hawkins Gentry. My husband was a great man, one of Smithsons and Columbia's first founders, Columbia's first mayor, and first postmaster general. Richard and I came to St. Louis in 1816 from Kentucky. I rode all the way there on a thoroughbred racing mare with my infant daughter, Dorothy Ann, riding on my lap. In 1821, we settled in Columbia, and Richard opened a tavern just off Broadway. We bought land for a farm at what is now 7th and Cherry Streets. Richard was an ambitious man with a military pedigree, and he quickly joined the Missouri militia. Consequently, he was gone for long periods of time, leaving me to tend to the farm, the tavern, the post office, <laughs> oh, and raise a bunch of children along the way. But I didn't mind too much. You see, I was a Kentucky woman, and a Kentucky woman don't complain. <laughs> now, you will know our opinion, mind you, and when we can, we'll take action. And when we can't, well, we'll quiet down when we feel like it. <laughs> While Richard was raising up in the ranks of the Missouri Militia and the Missouri State Legislature, I was taking on more responsibility at home. After Richard's untimely death, our friend Senator Thomas Hart Benton ensured that I would follow Richard's place as Postmaster of Columbia. Only the second woman in the entire United States to have that distinction. And I took it very seriously, making Columbia the third most important post office in the state of Missouri. Some people, those not especially acquainted with me, weren't sure if I could do it. They'd never seen a woman postmaster before. You see, in those days, anything and everything, including money and weapons, was sent through the mail. Post offices were always at risk of being held up. But I figured I could pull a trigger as good as any man could. Amen. That revolver and a shotgun under my counter, you could say those are my primary insurance policies. <laughs> Eventually, wanting more efficiency, I moved the entire operation to a building at 9th and Broadway, a two-story building that housed the post office in the front and the tavern in the back. <laughs> Now you see back in those days, the office of postmaster was a political appointment and every president kept me in my job for another 35 years, regardless of his particular political party. Columbia was my home and I am so proud to have made a difference here. Gentry County is named after Richard and in 1960, Gentry County even named a roadside park after me. In 1977, the city of Columbia rededicated its building at 7th and Broadway after me, and the good folks at Columbia Public Schools put my name on a middle school in 1993. My roots tell me that heaven must be a Kentucky kind of place, <laughs> but Missouri is where I made my stand, and I couldn't have ended up in a better place. I want to thank you all for coming today, and I did want to recognize my fourth great-granddaughter who was here with uh, roses for my gravesite.